When recording music, each instrument is recorded separately from the other instruments. This enables the sound engineer to increase or decrease the individual instruments to provide a better sound. With radio, we do not have the luxury of being able to adjust the individual instruments, but we have the next best thing. We have the five band processor, which splits the audio into five separate bands based on their frequency. These bands are band one, which is between 20 Hz and 170 Hz, or the lowest frequency. Band 2, 170 to 1000 Hz. Band 3, 1000 to 3200 Hz. Band 4, 3200 to 7200 Hz. And Band 5, which is the highest frequency, 7200 Hz, right up to 12000 Hz. This gives us the opportunity of adjusting these bands by compressing, expanding or limiting these frequency bands or we can apply compression, expansion or limiting to the signal as a whole by selecting the global option. This connects all bands to the same gating bus but we can deselect the global option which allows us to apply different settings to each band. If the global option is disabled then the individual bands can be selected by clicking the corresponding number 1 through 5. Each band has a compressor, expander and limiter which can be individually enabled or disabled. When playing a track and enabling the 5 band processor you should hear an immediate change in the sound output, again this might be good or bad depending on personal taste. There are countless websites, videos and articles which fully explain multiband processing in greater detail than we could possibly cover but we will try to give you an idea of how these features work and what effect they have on the audio output but don't be afraid to revert back to one of the preset values if things start going horribly wrong. Starting with the compressor, which can be a very powerful audio tool. In music terms, when we refer to compression, we are referring to the act of reducing or preventing a change in the audio level of a track. Perhaps a very loud cymbal or vocal section which, if not controlled, would cause an audio spike or peak in the output and which could be unpleasant for the listener. One way to mitigate this would be to know the track very well wait for a known loud section and turn the volume down, but this would affect the whole track and the specific loud piece would still sound louder. Instead, we split the signal into five different bands and we can set limits to compress a band if they exceed the threshold. This enables us to decrease the dynamic range of the audio signal so that a decibel increase of X will result in a change in the output of X over ratio. The compressor ratio is the ratio applied to any peaks above the set threshold. If the compressor ratio is set to 4 decibels and there is a sudden signal rise of 10 decibels, then the output signal will only rise by 2.5 decibels, that is 10 over 4. Anything below this threshold is unaffected. Does that make sense? The threshold is the limit we set and anything exceeding this limit is compressed whilst everything under this limit or threshold is untouched. The attack time is the time the processor takes to adapt to an increase in signal whilst the release time is the time the processor takes to recover from a transient or change. These can be configured for the compressor, expander and limiter as can the hold, band gain and links which are explained shortly. Both the attack and release affect the sound as a small attack time makes the processor react very quickly to the signal changes. This helps prevent clipping. But if very short attack times are used, this can make the track sound quite unnatural. Short release times tend to create a denser sound, but exaggerating this effect leads to an unpleasant and even tiring listening experience. Whilst this is a 5 band processor, these bands can be quite wide, but by selecting the option 1 or 2, we can subdivide each band into highs and lows, with one being applied to the bass or lower frequencies, while selecting two applies the settings to the low to medium frequencies in the band. We would recommend using a slower attack time of between 40 to 60 milliseconds for the bass frequencies, that is band one, and between 20 to 30 milliseconds for band two. If you were to set a very fast attack and a very fast release time, in addition to level pumping, you might also end up with audio distortion. This is due to the fact that the compressor would be trying to work on individual cycles of the input signal rather than on the overall envelope. 
This phenomenon is particularly noticeable when the input signal is from a bass instrument as the individual cycles are long enough to allow the compressor to respond. To get around this problem, it is necessary to increase either the compressor's release time or its hold time. Hold time is a short delay that prevents the compressor from going into its release cycle until a certain time has elapsed. All you need is a hold time longer than the wavelength of the lowest audio frequency to prevent this issue. If you have deselected the global option, after the audio signal has been split and processed depending on the frequency, the separate bands are combined into the broadband signal with the band gain set in the mixing level of each band to provide a sort of equalization. This can be adjusted according to taste. The band links effectively link two levels which can help prevent for example an unexpected bass sound during a vocal solo and also helps reduce clipping in the higher frequencies. It joins two different levels together. The expander is the complementary process to the compressor and is used to increase the difference between quieter and louder audio sections by making the quieter sections quieter and the louder sections louder. To achieve this, the output signal is decreased by x times ratio decibel for an x decibel fall for the input signal below the threshold. Complicated, I know. For example, if the expander ratio is set to 2 and the input signal falls 4 decibels below the threshold, the output signal will fall 4 times 2, 8 decibels. Above the threshold, the signal is unaffected. The limiter is an infinite ratio compressor, so for any increase of the input signal above the limiter threshold, there is no change in the output signal. As with the compressor, anything below the threshold is unaffected. This can, however, lead to distortion of the output. The overdrive control sets the compressor driving level. High settings will result in a louder, denser sound.